Hello everybody. Welcome to the Ask Allies Beginner Self Publishing Salon and uh, I'm your host Jyotsna Ramachandran and with me we have our co-host Tim Lewis. Hi Tim. Hi guys. Hi Joe. <laughs> Hi Tim. How are you doing? Good. Back from the US, right? Yes, I'm back from the US. I went to the Digital Book World Conference where I ran into Orna Ross, who of course is our imperious ally leader. Ah, did you uh, meet Orna there? Yes, I did. She gave, uh, she gave like a, I don't know if it was a keynote, but she gave a session to the whole room about self-publishing. So that was pretty impressive. Oh, that's good. So from my end, I've been really excited because one of the books that I co-authored with 23 other authors, uh, it's called uh, 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 Write and Grow Rich. And it went yeah. ahead to hit the bestseller charts in both USA Today as well as uh, Wall Street Journal bestseller list. So Ooh, you know, super that, I mean, that is proper impressive, to be honest. Yeah, I think uh, the person uh, uh, who initiated this, her name is Alinka. So she really did uh, an amazing job of, it's actually six months of work. So yeah. she carefully took us through the step-by-step -step process. And uh, finally, due to the collective effort and collaboration of 24 people, it was made possible. So, oh, it, so I, was it like a box set then or something? Or? Uh, it's not a box set. It's just one book with uh, 24 different chapters. So each, auth uh, each contributor talks about their experience uh, of making money by writing books. So what I'm really happy about is a self-published book can reach the charts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it sounds very similar to the book I wrote where I had 20 interviews with people uh, uh -huh. and each is a separate chapter. It's actually a very good format. It, uh, I mean, there's a, it's a big organizational <laughs> project to get right, but True. if you can get it right, and they, those kind of books work perfectly. Absolutely, yeah. So in today's episode, Tim, let's talk about the pricing strategy of books because a lot of authors get confused about, because Amazon and other platforms for self-published authors give the total freedom to choose the kind of pricing you want. So what's the way to price your book and how do you change the pricing? And these are some of the things that yeah. a lot of my clients keep asking me. So we'll go ahead with your insights on what's the right price for an ebook, and then we can talk about the paperback as well. Yeah, well, I mean, um, ebooks are traditionally cheaper than paperback books. Um, for practical reasons why ebooks are cheaper, as in they cost a lot less to push out. Uh, and also, it's where self publishers tend to be more dominant, and a lot of self publishers will price too low, basically, or they use price as a way of distinguishing themselves from traditional publishers. So, I mean, something that looms in the background, certainly on Amazon, is the royalty structure. So, this is why you see an awful lot of books for $2.99, is because that's where the 70% royalty <laughs> rate kicks in. Yeah. Uh, so, and it's not even a stepped thing. So, if your book is available for $2.49, you'll get 35, I think it's 35% royalties. Yes. <laughs> so just by adding an extra 50 cents on your book price, you suddenly have a massive jump in royalties. So that 299 book level is kind of significant. There's also a big like surge of books at 99 cents. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's people who are accepting that they're going to get lower royalties, but they're trying to promote their book in some way, but they yeah. don't want to make it free. Right. So, that's another step place where you see an awful lot of books at 99 cents. And of course there are books that are free. Now there are issues with making a book free. Um, certainly you can make a book free as part of the KDP um, select scheme. And that is an advantage of KDP select that you can have a free period and you get paid, I believe you get paid royalties even from when it's free, uh, which is attractive, but that's only a limited time frame. That's one of the two things you can do on KDP select. Um, beyond that, you, you obviously see ebooks up to $9.99. Uh, again, I think beyond on Amazon, still beyond $9.99, you go suddenly drop down to 35% 35, 35 yeah. royalties again. Yeah, I think so for first time authors, uh, we need to clarify that if your book is priced between $2.99 to $9.99, you get to enjoy the 70% uh, royalties on yeah. ebooks. But if it's below that, and the minimum, by the way, is uh, uh, 99 cents unless you're taking advantage of uh, KDP select and giving it away for free which is 
a five day period uh, opportunity. But after that, it has to be a, at a minimum of 99 cents. So between 99 cents to 2.99 or above $9.99, you only get a 35% royalty. So yeah, that's yeah. something you should bear in mind. Yeah, I mean, Kobo actually pay 70% royalties above 99, uh, mm -hmm. $9.99, uh, which is unusual. Uh, I think a lot of the other competitive ones, I think iBooks might as well. But Amazon, like, they don't want expensive ebooks. They don't want, like, $99 ebooks on their, on their thing. So that's why they have this massive jump down. Uh, and to correct you, you can have books free outside of KDP Select. In fact, one of my yeah, books... You can make it permanently free, right? But that's a yeah. separate strategy. Um, Would you like to discuss it, about that it, first? It's a yeah. lot of work, right? Yeah, well, yeah. So what permafree is is that you're not in uh in fact you can't do permafree in kdp select because kdp select you have to be exclusive to amazon and right. the way that permafree works is that you put your book free on every other store and then you basically pester kdp support uh, and you click like match price because amazon will say they will match the price of other retailers they will eventually set the book free on Amazon. When they get around to doing this is, and they, they do it like, sometimes they just suddenly jump the price back up to full randomly at some other point, uh, and then you have to go do it again. Okay. Uh, so it, it's not, it, that's why it's kind of called perma-free, because once you go to this effort of trying to set your book free on Amazon by using the other stores, hmm. it, it's not a great idea to make it, priced again because yeah. then like Amazon may not raise it from free and then the other stores are complaining and you can get into this terrible mess hmm. but the way that people are using permafree because you think well why do you want to make your book permanently free because you're not going to get any royalties from it it's like clearly it's pointless what most self-published authors are doing is they provide like an introductory book or a first in series as free so for example in my time travel time shock series the first book is free mm -hmm. um, and you can download that from free on Amazon. And that's part of a free, free book series. So a trilogy. Right. The second book I put as nine, nine uh, well, I think I might've actually raised it up to two ninety nine. Okay. But I put it as 99 cents and then the third book is two ninety nine. So actually the place I'm making my money is in the third book. It's not in the second book or the first book, but the first book is kind of, to encourage people to read it and if they like that then they can cheaply buy the second book and and a lot of the more kind of industrial and kind of professional self-publishers have very very long book series so i know people who write zombie books for example and they have like 15 books in their series mm. like the most ridiculous kind of and the first book will be free and then they step and they're making their money on those later books so that's where permafree is useful because it gives an opportunity for people to read your work without having to pay for it. Uh, because obviously paying for something is a big step. So that's kind of where permafree comes into it. Oh, wonderful. So one has to clearly use permafree as a very conscious strategy uh, so yeah. that the book can always be for free and can act like, uh, the first step uh, or an introduction to your brand or to your catalog of books that you have, yeah. right? So, uh, Tim, do you just talk about uh, at the end of the book that I have seven other books in the series or do you also capture people's email IDs through the free book? Well, I should capture people's email address. I have got a sign up for it, but uh, it's never, I'm not even sure that list works anymore. But this is clearly a sensible idea. I know what people who are doing what they're supposed to be doing. There are a number of strategies that say capture an email address. That certainly works if you haven't completed the series yet. So mm -hmm. let's say you've got a free book and then you've got another book and then you've got another book, but you've actually got to write another 10 books in that series. Yeah. If you have people's email signing up for emails, then when that fourth book comes out, that you're writing at the moment, you can blast it out to the people who signed up for, in the previous three books. So email, email does work. Really. It's a problem, still the most efficient way of getting people to do things at one particular time. 
Uh, I mean, you can put a post on social media, but you don't know when and if people are going to see it. Uh, they may not be in the right frame of mind. Uh, but generally, people, when people are checking their email, they tend to be in more of a buying kind of mindset than like if they just on Facebook to look at cat pictures, they're not necessarily going to be in like, oh, Tim's new book is available. They may even see that, but they, an email works really well. Yeah. Um, the other thing that people have done, which again, I don't do, <laughs> is they put in like a sample chapter of the next book at the end of their free book. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, what I did and what I know of other, other people do is they put a, a, a cliffhanger at the end of their book. Uh, I didn't put a particularly big cliffhanger because people don't like cliffhangers in a way, but they work. So if it's kind of like um, you have a, a zombie book and then it's kind of like your hero is dangling from a cliff uh, mm. and it's like, find out in the next book that just happens to be available for nine ninety nine on Amazon. then that does work very well uh, right. as a strategy, though some people will hate you for doing it. So mm -hmm. that's another option. Yeah. So I think if somebody is planning to write a series, then definitely having the first one for free works like magic. Now let's yeah. talk a little bit about this 99 cent strategy. So I've seen a lot yeah. of authors use this when they're just launching their book. They either use KDP select and start off with a few free days or they, or if they already have an audience, uh, they launch the book directly for 99 cents and make sure that a lot of people load it so that they they can get get to climb the charts and then they increase it to the free pricing so have you tried that as well i have tried that as well um i didn't have particular success for, with it to be honest um uh, but i can see that well i say that I mean, I mean actually with my first book it was priced 99 cents and i did pay for like quite a lot on Facebook advertising and I pushed it up into a, the time travel chart in the UK. So that strategy can work. The only trouble is that you, you are betwixt and between because you're getting like sort of 30 cents a copy you sell. Yeah. So <laughs> unless you're very good at when you switch it back to exactly. the full price. It's definitely not, not a long term thing because you're not going to make anything out of it. But if no. it's just for probably a week or less than that, then it's still fine because you get the initial uh, momentum, a lot of downloads, which will help you climb the charts. And then you have a good visibility for the book, which will help it sell at a higher price. Yeah. I mean, that's where the KDP countdown deals are good because those I do know you do get 70% royalties, even though you're at 99 cents. Yeah. So at least you get an extra <laughs> like 45 yeah. cents. Would you like to talk a little bit about how countdown deals work, Tim? Yeah. So, for people who, I mean, a little bit of, we've talked about KDP Select without really saying what it is. When you go onto Amazon's KDP interface, so that's Kindle Direct Publishing, and you write in like all your book details and you click to upload the book, right at the bottom is this kind of, do you want to take part in our KDP Select exclusive program? Now, what you're giving up by being in the KDP Select program is that you can't have that ebook available anywhere else, including your, your website, or on Amazon, on no, on Apple, on uh, Google Play, on Kobo, all the other ebook retailers. Um, my understanding is it doesn't affect paperback, so you can make, put the paperback on like, in yeah. part, same with audio books. But this is just for ebooks. But what you get out of being on KDP Select is that you your book is available for lending under their their scheme, and also that you get access to uh, once in your three month period, uh, you can either do a free d a couple of free days, and I think there's like five or something, yeah. which don't have to be on the same time, or you can do a countdown deal. Now, what a countdown deal is, it will basically show your book on the Amazon store with its normal price crossed out and then down to a lower price and a little countdown client uh, clock that says like, this book is available for 99 cents for five days. Uh, which is quite actually it's quite a good impressive thing, uh, at least on the Amazon uh, dashboard. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way it works is that you get paid royalties at a higher rate, even though your price is down in the, like 99 cents or whatever. So that is what a countdown deal is. It's one of the promotion options that you get from being in the KDP select scheme. Yeah, and you can select multiple price bands, right? Like 
one dollar yeah. ninety nine cents for a few days, then you can just lower it or increase it, right? Yeah, I, 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 I've only done one once. I think you do have the right. You have the option of doing several steps, but mm -hmm. you can do a step down and a step up. Um, you would need to check on the KDP, but yeah, countdown deals can be effective. Uh, what I didn't appreciate is I thought you could do you you could do countdown deals and the three days, but you have to pick one. Wow, uh, so yeah. that that's kind of and also I think I believe that you can't do a countdown deal within the first month that you're on KDP Select, okay. uh, which is a bit of a pain because there are lots of charts on Amazon which are new release ones mm -hmm. which are within the first month. So being a, if you could do a countdown deal immediately, that would make a bigger difference. But you have to wait a month, I think. Mm. Uh, so that's a, another thing to consider. Right. Another reason why people might want to consider this 99 cent pricing is like how we uh, ran a pre-order for our uh, uh, Write and Grow Rich book. And the reason why we priced it at 99 cents is we wanted the maximum number of unit sales to happen yeah. uh, but if we gave away the book for free we will not be eligible later for uh, a usa today or uh, a new york times or any of those lists so that's why we had to choose the lowest price and definitely our our uh, goal was not to make a lots of money from the book but was was to just see how the whole uh, bestsellers outside amazon works so that's yeah. why we had to consciously do a pre-order uh, starting a couple of months before the actual launch and start gathering these 99 cents sales. So it really uh, helped us that way. Yeah. I mean, something else to consider pricing wise is I generally don't recommend that people put their book on 2.99. Now, the reason why is that if you think about it, you have nowhere to go apart from say 99 cents or free. Uh, if you put your book available for free 99, you can at least go to 299 and stay in the royalty. Well, and you can say like as a special deal for this month, because mm. it's Halloween or whatever, I'm going to lower my book to 299. But if you're already at 299, then any kind of promotion, you're automatically jumping out of the higher royalty range uh, into a lower royalty range and you end up competing against people who are on countdown deals and all the rest of it. So I think you, you kind of need a bit of margin. Now, this is obviously harder if you've got something like a novella. Mm. Uh, I mean, I felt a bit guilty pricing my last novella in that series at 2 dollars right. But um, I think in general, I think a lot of indie publishers price their books too low. I, mm. I'm, I may be controversial in this viewpoint, but I think uh, also because if you have a high, slightly higher price book, then the paperback doesn't look so massively uh, expensive in comparison. Yeah. So that's why I say it's worth at least looking at three ninety nine, four ninety nine, possibly even five ninety nine. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And I think nonfiction is more tolerance of higher prices as well. Oh, exactly. One of my clients, I, I don't remember exactly the book's topic. But I think it was about stock market and he had some unique formula which is making him a lot of money and yeah. uh, he was adamant that his ebook would be priced at ten dollars i said who <laughs> does that i mean all the other books in your genre are priced at 2.99 but he said look at the massive value i'm giving and that will the pricing itself will make my book stand out from the competition so that's another way of looking at it like uh, oh yeah you know, and he strongly believes that by investing $10, somebody is going to learn a million dollar secret by reading his book. Then why not price it higher? You know, that's his way of looking at it. So it's not necessary that every book has to be just $2.99. Uh, yeah. And I see a lot of authors testing it. They, they increase it to $3.99. And if it's still, still selling without any dip in sales, they slightly make it for, uh, into $4.99. And then if they see there is a dip, they just bring it back to $3.99. Yeah. So you can just keep testing and seeing what works. But I do agree, uh, Tim, that if you always price it at two ninety nine, then if you want to do a, a New Year offer or a Christmas deal or something like that, there is no lower pricing to look at. So it's better to slightly probably you know three ninety nine, four ninety nine. But depends on the as you mentioned on the genre and how the other books are also priced at. Yeah, and the other thing that um, people don't appreciate, and you do need to be obviously going wide, but on on sites like Kobo. Mm. Um, because they, when they do promotions and you can put in, you can apply for promotions on Co Kobo's, uh, 
another ebook retailer which is big in Canada basically they're based right. in Toronto but they've got like global network of and certainly places like Africa Kobe are a lot bigger than Amazon um, mm. and places like Malaysia and a lot of Asia, Asia as well they're bigger but they have marketing teams so if you put in for promotion on Kobo they basically say they give preference to higher value books which are discounted further right so if you've got a free 99 book and then you go to Kobo and say well I'm going to put that on for like 2.99 as a special offer then you're unlikely to get accepted mm. but if you're this guy with his 9.99 book mm. and you say well I'm going to do a promotion for 3.99 then there's a very good chance that Kobo will accept you for one of their like daily deals or promotional things right. uh, and it's similar with iBooks as well they have marketing they have basically merchandising teams and people who look through the offers and see well is this a good deal to me hmm. so in some ways like if you're going wide higher pricing can make sense correct yeah so it totally depends on why uh, and how are they planning uh, an author is planning to use their book is it just to introduce readers to your brand then try to make it perma free uh, or if you're just launching then 99 cents is okay but in the long term you need to make money right <laughs> otherwise oh, yeah. you can't become uh, you can't aspire to become a full time writer so then it's really important that you price your book well and be confident that your book is worth the price yeah so yeah. let's talk a little bit about paperbacks uh, tim now yeah. paperbacks don't offer that level of flexibility because there is a print cost involved and amazon tells us what should be the minimum price and the maximum price for the book right so would you go with the somewhere close to the minimum price or would you look at the other books and price it accordingly um personally it depends is the answer <laughs> um i would say that you don't want to be going anywhere near the minimum price for paperbacks hmm. and that is because well, if you have any kind of, like, you've created a paperback version of your book. So why have you created a paperback version? If you've only created a paperback version to be available for sale on Amazon, mm -hmm. then the minimum price, close to the minimum price makes sense. But if you have any aspirations at all that you may want your book to be available in bookstores, then you need to be considering that you need to be raising your prices quite considerably because on amazon you've got basically the print cost of the book so for example my new social media networking book uh, i'm selling it for ten dollars the paperback version hmm. the author copies if i offer if i order author copies i pay like two dollars fifty i think for it so that is the cost of printing the book yeah so you say, well, why have I got this like $7.50 sort of like margin there? At some stage, and I haven't done it at the moment, um, I'm going to look to go to Ingram Spark. Um, I could do this on Create Space, but it makes sense to do it on Ingram Spark mm. to make it orderable and available in bookstores. Yeah. Now, the thing about bookstore pricing is that typically a bookstore will take 50 to 55% of the price of your book to pay them because it's not a cheap thing i mean we have this romantic idea about bookstores but mm. they need to make money themselves so yeah. like on your on that ten dollar sale five dollars fifty will probably if it sells in a bookstore five dollars fifty will go to the bookstore mm. um and then if they don't sell then they can return you the book yeah uh, which basically would mean you destroy it in the end of the day you could take them back the old dog-eared copies that have been sitting in the book and try and resell them yourself but um so then you've got like well so that means that between that two dollars print cost mm -hmm. and my four dollars fifty that i've got uh that that it will still be a profit margin for me but if i put it at the minimum if i sold the book for like five dollars mm -hmm. then i would have no money whatsoever from selling in the bookstore Exactly. So I would suggest to most people to price their book, paperback books as if they are going to sell it in the bookstore and they will make some money. I mean, you know, this is why the big publishing com companies are still so competitive in paper because they can afford cheaper printing costs because they're doing print runs. So that $2 might go down to $1.50 or $1. Yeah. 
they've also got merchandising teams who can go around the bookstores and encourage the bookstores to order their books. Mm. Um, but I think for most self-publishers, work out what the cost, uh, what the price should be for a bookstore distribution, and then that is the price that you make it available on Amazon. Because I think that people are also less sensitive to price on paperback. People expect yeah. to pay more. Yeah, so people understand the value of a paperback, right? Yeah. Sometimes a, a person looks at the paperback pricing and it's fifteen dollars, and the ebook is for two ninety nine. If you yeah. can't afford the paperback, it actually helps in selling the ebook. So either way, as long as somebody reads the book, it's good. So oh yeah, think, yeah, making it too cheap will not. Uh, bring the distinction between the ebook and the paperback. So I think it's a good idea to price it slightly yeah. higher or considerably higher than the minimum price that uh, Amazon tells you. And ne next, looking at uh, the audiobook, I think there we have no choice, right? Amazon fixed the price. So uh, yeah, that's... depending, I think, on the length of the audiobook, they've come up with the pricing. So we just have to accept that. The only thing we can decide is whether to keep 40% royalty or 25% based on the exclusivity that we give to Amazon. So if we give them the exclusivity, then we earn 40% of the price of the audiobook. Or if we want to distribute it in other places, then we get to keep only 25%. I think that's the only freedom we have right now. We can't choose the price, right? Yeah, well, my understanding is that, and I, I still need to get around to doing an audiobook. I've got one almost set up, which is based on my podcast episodes, actually. Uh -huh. um, there are sites like Find Away Voices that let you distribute to loads of other platforms. Audible are not the only audio book platform. However, mm. they are like ridiculously like large market share, sort of eighty percent or something like that. Mm. My understanding is that Find Away Voices you can set the price on the other some of the other retailers. Mm. Um, so, and whether that price matches with Amazon, I don't know. I don't, I, I suspect you're right. It's still a very murky area of audiobook. They mm. are very profitable, apparently. People are making a lot of money from audiobooks, but you are very much in Audible's um, sort of, because a loss, I mean, I've got an Audible subscription and I use credits, so I get a credit every month. Um, so a lot of your audiobook income is not people buying the book outright. It's not yeah. like an e-books. It's people, it's people in effect renting your book. Uh, mm. So it is an interesting area, audiobook pricing. You have very little control. Correct, yeah. But it's definitely another good, great source of income. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you come across this uh, other model, Tim, where uh, it, you won't see it inside Amazon, but authors do it on their uh, Facebook pages and other profiles where they tell that, hey, I have a new book that's coming out. And I, I would love to give you the paperback away for free. You just have to pay for the shipping. Yeah, so, so we pay $10 <laughs> or $7 for yeah. shipping and we end up getting the paperback. But I, I was following some of these guys to, to just check how are they actually making money because it involves printing and shipping and they're just charging us for the shipping. So I got to know that out of 100 people who buy the book uh, for free and just pay the shipping, a percentage of them, maybe 10 or 20 percentage of them, are, uh, end up buying something else on the next landing page, which could be a course or uh, something else that's sold by the author. So it's actually like a funnel. So on the top of the funnel, they get, a, get this paperback for free and the shipping would just cover a part of the cost. But so many of them end up buying something of a higher value from the author. So the idea is this author wants their physical book to be present in people's bookshelves. So you know, it creates a different kind of a connect rather than just giving away an ebook for free. So are you planning yeah. to try something like that, Tim? I know it's a lot of work though. Uh, well, I wasn't, I haven't heard of that before at all, to be honest. Though I have given out an awful lot of copies of uh, this book in the last, uh, I gave out about 20, well, no, I actually sold 17 uh -huh. at a conference in Nottingham and then I gave out about the conference. 10. Uh -huh. <laughs> 10 in, uh, in the US. So um, I can see because if your book is kind of nonfiction or it's like uh, first in series, then I can see it could make sense. I mean, it's the same principle as the free ebook. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, you've got like this 
I mean, if you're asking people to pay for shipping anyway, then I'm kind of like, well, <laughs> why aren't you just asking them for like one dollar or something like that? At least make yeah. some money out. But I think it's just the human psychology. When we realize right. it's a free book and we are just covering the shipping, people just assume that they are paying nothing, though they are paying ten dollars. So <laughs> it's it's just the way our mind works. And uh, smart yeah. marketers uh, and authors make use of that. And if they have something, uh, especially this works well for nonfiction authors. If they have uh, an online course for uh, 300 or $500, a small percentage of people end up buying that. And yeah. that's how they make all the money back and a lot more. Yeah. Well, a lot of authors are making their money from things that aren't books. I mean, uh, and the, the thing is that I think a lot of self-publishers end up in other products because they realize that actually other products are a lot easier to sell than books most of the time. Yeah. If you can sell like five people some month long training course, thing for a thousand dollars that's gonna be you're gonna have to sell an awful lot of books to make that same amount of money so if you have to give away or like splurge loads of copies to get like if you spend two thousand dollars on giving away books but then you get five thousand dollars of people doing your training course that makes sense uh, right. and a lot of self-publishers end up doing courses or training or like role play fantasy things whatever like a non a fiction author would do yeah. uh, i mean fiction in some ways is tougher to make those kind of i suppose you could have a, like a club where you all dress up as elves or something <laughs> but kind of uh, non-fiction is a lot easier for making money on those other areas so you're right i mean the book can be like a mega business card really at the end of the day true that was a very interesting interesting discussion tim and uh yeah. Uh, I hope uh, all you listeners and watchers got a lot of value out of this episode and we'll see you next month. Meanwhile, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and we have a couple of other shows like a Q&A podcast and an advanced salon. So make sure you tune into those as well and we both will see you next month. Bye. Bye.